video, we're going to sort through all of these different equations we have for a line. There are useful reasons we have more than one equation for a line, and that has to do with the type of information you can put into the equation or take out of the equation. Depending on what you know, it might be easier to begin writing an equation in slope-intercept form or in point-slope form, or you might find that you actually need to use the slope equation first. So the goal here is going to be to figure out what do we do first when presented with some information when we want to find a line. Let me walk you through the first one. If we have a point on the line and the slope, which linear equation is the easiest to use right away? Is it slope-intercept, point-slope, or the slope equation? And a hint here would be to say, all right, I have a point, and I can see that a point is involved in the second item, the point-slope form. And I also have a slope, and the slope is in both the slope-intercept form and the point-slope form. So we can see that we have complete information here for the point-slope form. So that's going to be the easiest one to use right away. Why not you go ahead and pause this video and try out the next four lines. Pause the video, come back when you think you've got it. Okay, just like in the last problem, I'm going to go ahead and highlight information as I find it. So I know that in this line I have a y-intercept, which means I have the intercept needed for that slope-intercept form. I also know that I have the slope. So I have the slope, which could be put into slope-intercept form, or it could be put into point-slope form. The only equation where I have all the information I need is that slope-intercept form. So that's what I'm going to use. The next line, we have an x-intercept and the slope. Now, x-intercept doesn't fit any of these equations nicely, but slope could go in either the slope-intercept form or the point-slope form. The important thing to remember here is that the x-intercept, it is a point, and so it's just not the y-intercept. So point-slope form, we actually do have the right amount of information to use it immediately. What if we have two points? Well, now we have no slope. We don't know that we have a y-intercept. We do know that we have a, a point, so we kind of have half of the information we need for point-slope form. So that's the closest. But what we really still need is the slope. And we can find the slope if we have two points. Because we have those two points, and we can use two points to find the slope, I'm going to start by finding the slope equation, and then when I have that, put it into the point-slope form. Finally, we have an x-intercept and a y-intercept. Now we know that that y-intercept is useful, it goes into the slope-intercept form. We know that that x-intercept could be useful in that it could go into the point in point-slope form. But in both cases, we're missing the slopes. Now, we do technically have two points. We have an x-intercept and a y-intercept. And so we're missing the slope in both cases. So I'm going to say the first thing we need to do is actually use the slope equation using both the y-intercept and the x-intercept. Once I have the slope from that slope equation, I could use it in either the point-slope form or the slope-intercept form. But I think the slope-intercept form will be a little bit faster because there's less simplification involved. Keep in mind that however you start, you can always write the final answer in slope-intercept form, except for those two edge cases, horizontal and vertical lines. Now, I'd like you to pause this video and try the two problems that are below on your own, and then come back and see how you've done. For each problem, you're going to find the equation of the line and then write the final result in slope-intercept form. First problem, we have a line that passes through the point 5 comma 10.5 and the point 8 comma 14.7. So we have two points. And in all of the cases where we had two points, what did we have to do first? We had to use the slope equation. I'm going to go ahead and write these points vertically to each other. I'm going to write 5 comma 10.5 above the point 8 comma 14.7. I'm going to find the slope which is the change in y over the change in x, and that's going to be 14.7 minus 10.5 over 8 minus 5. Doing that subtraction, 14.7 minus 10.5 is 4.2, 8 
8 minus 5 is 3. 4.2 divided by 3 is 1.4. I know the slope and I know two points. So I'm just going to pick one of them. I'll pick the first one, 5 comma 10.5, and I'll use that in the slope intercept form. That's y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. y minus 10.5 equals 1.4 times x minus 5. Now we were asked to write the final result in slope intercept form, so we need to do a little bit of simplification here. Let's first do that distribution. Nothing to do on the left, so y minus 10.5 equals 1.4x, and then we've got to do 1.4 times negative 5, which gives us minus a 7. So now we have y minus 10.5 equals 1.4x minus 7. And to get the y by itself, I need to add 10.5 to both sides. I'm going to have y minus 10.5 plus 10.5 equals 1.4x minus 7 plus 10.5. I've added 10.5 to both sides. On the left, I have y equals, and on the right, I have 1.4x, and then negative 7 plus 10.5 is going to be 3.5. So y equals 1.4x plus 3.5. Now this might be a good time to point out that it's really easy to check to see if you've got this answer correct. We can move over to Desmos and put in the linear equation we found along with the points that we originally had. Over in Desmos, we can see that our line is an increasing line with a y-intercept of 3.5, increasing with a slope of 1.4, and when I graph the point 5 comma 10.5, we can see it falls perfectly on the line. When we graph the point 8 comma 14.7, we can see that that also falls perfectly on the line. In the second problem, we have a line with a y-intercept of 20 and an x-intercept of negative 8. Now that y-intercept is super helpful for the slope-intercept form. The x-intercept could be used in point-slope form, but what we're missing in both cases is that slope. So let's go ahead and write both points so that they are vertical from each other. The y-intercept would be 0, comma, 20, and the x-intercept would be negative 8, comma, 0. I'm going to calculate the change in y over the change in x. That's 0 minus 20 over negative 8 minus 0. Doing our subtraction, 0 minus 20 is negative 20. Negative 8 minus 0 is negative 8. This gives us 20 over 8, positive, and then we can reduce those by a factor of 4. So that would give us 5 halves for our slope. Now that I have the slope, it's important to remember that you do have the y-intercept. So the easiest equation to use is y equals mx plus b. In this case, y equals 5 halves x plus 20. To recap, just remember that you make your choice of which equation to use based off what information you have. Think carefully about the information you have, and if you don't have the slope, you're always going to have to find that first. Then which equation just depends on the information you were given.